guys you're welcome thanks for clicking so jewish scholar before he could accept islam he got to understand prophet muhammad and to know how powerful the religion is so jewish scholar test prophet muhammad after that he accepts islam let's check it out it was by a learned scholar of that time zaid ibn sana and i said look this man he had put the dots together and he was expecting a messenger like they were to come and he had came and he was looking at his life and everything fit except one thing that he had read in the Torah talking about Al -hilm. what is Al -hilm? forbearance that somebody harm you and he is deserving your punishment and you're able to punish you're aware of their harm and you do not need them and you refrain from punishing them and rather you treat them kindly. The forbearance that this messenger would have. So he wanted to test the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was able to verify, accept this one, that when you increase dealing with him in an ignorant way, his forbearance increases. So I'm telling my kids this, that we're extracting guidance. We have a blueprint for how we need to live our lives. That's a blessing. And he had found that the Muslims were in desperation. So I decided to test him in this area. So he went to the um, mosque one day when an incident happened in front of him that some Muslims needed desperately some financial help. And they needed some money, so he put up. He said, look, I'm going to give you a loan for one year. I will lend you the money for one year. Of course, no usury, okay? He came back after three months, grabbed the messenger of Allah by his neck, started to insult him. Can you imagine someone put their hands on you? Go back home, but I was born here. You, ba ba beep, 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 beep. What do we do? What are you about to do? Standing in front of the masjids with guns. What are you going to snap? Unfortunately, you have some Muslims getting out of line, getting ghetto. That doesn't help the da'wah. Look at the forbearance of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazing. The guy who got his hands on him. Umar radiallahu anhu, he's, he's like, let me get him. So he insults him. You guys, you don't pay your debts. He's doing, he's setting it up. Look, he promised a year, came back after three months. He wants to test him. So the Prophet says, go pay him and give him some more because you frighten him. You should, you should advise him in a nice way, oh my. So for scaring him, give him more. Make a long story short, he ends up paying it back. The man says, do you know who I am? Ask you, Omar. He said, no. Why, why do you snap like you're acting in this way to the Messenger of Allah? I was testing him. There was just one thing. I had connected the dots and I saw that indeed this was the Messenger. But there was one thing holding me back. It was this thing that I needed to test his forbearance. And forbearance means when you're in a position that someone's oppressing you, someone's bringing harm upon you, and you're able to punish them back. Like the Prophet saw some, he could have just said, go get them right now. It's finished, done. But he didn't. This was a learned man of that time, a Jewish scholar. This wasn't a layman and he accepted Islam. Take that to the streets. We have to be forbearing to a whole nother level because there's a lot of heat coming on. People, they don't understand the beauty of Islam, the message of Islam. And they've fallen victim to the Islamophobia machine. So forbearance, remember this, patience. Just as Brother Eddie was saying a moment ago, that we live at a time where, you know, people, they don't understand our religion. They don't know what Islam is. You have people sitting on Fox News commentating and telling us who Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was when they've never read a Muslim biography of his. You know, they've only read critique of him. They've only read the story of him that actually was written by people who never liked him in the first place. Why don't you read a critique of his from a Muslim? Why don't you read his life from a Muslim's perspective? You want to know who the Prophet Muhammad was? Come and talk to me. Let me tell you who he was. Actually scrap the talk. Let me show you who he was. You know, he was a person that smiled. He was a lovable person. 
His family loved him to bits. His children loved him to bits. For those of you who think that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an abusive man, I swear by God, you can never provide me with a single case, a single scenario in his entire life where he ever raised his hand on any of his family members even once. Is that true or false? Is that an exaggeration? Not an exaggeration. This is an academic claim, by the way. I instruct at a seminary. I'm an instructor at a seminary. I teach on an academic level. This is actually a factual claim. This is not true. It's not possible. All these claims that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was out there to murder everyone that wasn't a Muslim, absolutely false. Think about this. He lived in a city called Medina. Before he arrives there, all non-Muslim. When he comes there, a fraction of society accepts Islam. And the other fraction remains as non-Muslim until he passes away and even after that. So I ask you a question. If Muslims were supposed to annihilate everyone on the face of this earth who weren't Muslims, there was only one of two possibilities that would remain in his city. Either everyone would be Muslim and forced into Islam, or they would be non-Muslim and all the Muslims would have been killed. Simple? Yes, no? Simple logic, right? But 10 years later, what happens? Okay, this is trying to explain to us who Prophet Muhammad is, correct the misconception about Prophet Muhammad, you know, being a killer, being a this. He said, no, Mr. Muhammad showed love. He was a lovable person. He was a kind person. And this person spoke about forbearance in the beginning. The one thing about Islam is that Islam does not teach you to do bad to your neighbor or to punish your neighbor badly. No, that's what most people tend to believe in, that Islam is this, Islam is that. And getting to the end of the video, one Muslim said that, a Muslim man said that, most people are, you know, they are misguided because I Islam. The lot of negative things they talk about Islam is not true. That if you want to learn about Islam or you want to know more about Quran, ask the Muslim himself. Don't do some researches that you know are not true. Don't be deceived by what the media publish out there negatively about Islam. That you have to thoroughly do your research or ask a Muslim directly. That it's so sad for him to hear that. People are saying a lot of wrong things about Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad is not someone like that. So he's it, it, just trying to let people understand that, you know, when you come closer to Allah, you tend to understand Islam more. When you come closer to Allah, you tend to understand Islam more. You tend to understand that there are some things that are said that are not really true until you read it by yourself before you understand the religion and get to understand that. This is how Prophet Muhammad works. This is how the religion operates. So, you know, that was a beautiful one. But and the topic, I don't know. I, not, I, I never saw anybody accepting Islam here. Maybe it's just to catch, I don't know. The topic of this video is kind of confusing. But regardless, the main thing is that the message was passed. And they've let non-Muslim understand the true meaning of Islam and what Islam entails. That's beautiful to watch. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.